Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, September 7th. Thank you for joining. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, we praise your name and give all the glory to you. And we are thankful for this opportunity to get together in prayer, to get together to learn more about the message that you have for each and every one of us. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We are in Genesis 20, 1 through 18. Now Abraham moved on from there into the region of Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur. For a while he stayed in Gerar, and there Abraham said of his wife Sarah, She is my sister. Then Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Now Abimelech had not gone near her, so he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say, he is my brother? I have done this with a clear conscience and clean hands. Then God said to him in the dream, yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience, and so I have kept you from sinning against me. That is why I did not let you touch her. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all who belong to you will die. Early the next morning, Abimelech summoned all his officials, and when he told them all that had happened, they were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham in and said, What have you done to us? How have I wronged you that you have brought such great guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have done these things to me that should never be done. And Abimelech asked Abraham, What was your reason for doing this? Abraham replied, I said to myself, There is surely no fear of God in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, through not, uh, though not of my mother, and she became my wife. And when God had me wander from my father's household, I said to her, This is how you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say of me, He is my brother. Then Abimelech brought sheep and cattle and male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham and returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, My land is before you. Live wherever you like. To Sarah he said, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense against you before all who are with you. You are completely vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female slaves, so that they could have children again. For the Lord had kept all the women in Abimelech's household from conceiving because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. In 6 we have, Then God said to him in the dream, Yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience, and so I have kept you from sinning against me. Abraham just assumed that Abimelech was a wicked man. However, God protected Ambibelech from the sin of adultery. God extended mercy on him, an innocent man. God protects us also from sin. Sit back and reflect on how many times God stopped us from sin, maybe even every day, since we sin all day long, every day. We were born sinners, but God has our backs. That is why God sent his son down to take our sin to the cross. God loves us and he always has our back. In 7 it says, Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you will live. This is the first time prophet was used in the Bible. But in this case, it is speaking of someone close to God, not of someone speaking for God. In 9 it says, Then Ambivalek called Abraham in and said, why, what have you done to us? How have I wronged you that you have brought such great guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have done things to me that should never be done. And in 10 and 11, it says, And Ambivalek asked Abraham, What was your reason for doing this? Abraham replied, I said to myself, There is surely no fear of God in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Even though Ambivalek was not close to God, he knew the difference between right and wrong. Abraham did not expect this of Ambivalek. 
Abraham was fearing man, not God. He was more concerned about what would happen to him if they found out that Sarah actually was his wife. Again, fearing man, fearing what would happen, not, not thinking about why are you doing this before God? Why are you lying before God? Fear of God shows itself in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. So think about how your day goes. Are you showing fear in your life through your thoughts, words, and actions? Fear of God is a good thing for us to reflect on so that we do be more Christ-like. Maybe we also are surprised at a non-believer's response in a situation which may cause us to reflect on how sometimes we handle situations. You know, we make mistakes. We're sinners. We make mistakes. Sometimes we say the wrong thing. Sometimes we do the wrong thing. But when you sit back and reflect on what your day was like, go to God in repentance and ask him to help you to avoid sin the following day. Go to bed saying, Father God, I pray to do less sin tomorrow than I did today. Help me with this sin that occurs more frequently than I would like it to. Maybe we also have been rebuked by someone who does not have a relationship with God. We are sinners and we do sometimes do or say something that is not Christ-like. And sometimes it does take a non-believer to point our own sin at us. You know, we are sinners. We're, we, we're going to continue to sin for the rest of our lives. But let's pray about sinning less. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart so that you have a day with less sin. In 14, 15, and 16, it says, Then Abimelech brought sheep and cattle and male and female slaves and gave it to Abraham, and he returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, My land is before you. Live wherever you like. To Sarah, he said, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense against you before all who are with you. You are completely vindicated. Abimelech extended grace to Abraham, even though Abraham deceived him. In 17 and 18, we have then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female slaves, so that they could have children again. For the Lord had kept all the women in Abimelech's household from conceiving because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. God had control over the situation because he had a plan for Abraham and his descendants, a covenant. So Abraham, God wanted Abraham to fulfill the covenant to carry on God's work. So he was going to do, God was going to do whatever needed to be done so that Abraham would get to the place where he would have many descendants. Again, God always has our back. And God puts things in our lives and takes things out of our lives so that his will will always be done. And perhaps it was also God's plan as he pulled everyone out of this situation that Ambivalic himself would respect and fear Abraham's God. So think about that also when you're with non-believers that with your words, with your actions, that maybe a non-believer is going to look at you or listen to you and think, I want to know more about this God that you fear. And sit down and take the time with this person and tell him all about God, all about Jesus, all about the Holy Spirit, and the joy and the peace that you have because you have a relationship with God. We also struggle with temptations as Abraham did twice with lying about his relationship with his wife the first time to the Egyptians as they entered Egypt. And just as God had control over this entire situation, God is also watching over us and will pull us through our situations for his glory only. God does not pull us through our situations to make us look good. He pulls us through our situations so he looks good because he's the one god is the one who has the control and all the glory is always to go to god without god we couldn't do anything so continually thank god for his presence in our lives and finally abraham prayed let's not forget to go to god in all situations 
in repentance and in thanksgiving. Think about what God has pulled you through many times. Always go to God in thanksgiving. And always go to God with, God, I pray to be obedient to your will, not mine. I pray to be included in your plan. Show me, God, where you want me to serve you on this day. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that each and every one of us have open ears and open hearts and open minds when you speak to us and that we are obedient to your will. We pray to be included in your plan. We pray, Father God, that each and every day we are a blessing to someone, that each and every day we are blessed, that each and every day we can be a comfort to someone, that we can pull someone out of the darkness. We pray, Father God, for boldness with your word. We pray, Father God, that we love continually and that we love those whom we don't even know, Father God, but that we that you place in our paths, Father God, that we can share the love of Jesus with them. We pray, Father God, to be filled with your Holy Spirit. We pray for opportunities to share you with others. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a week filled with blessings. Watch out for that person that God's going to be placing in your lives to share him with, to share the love of Jesus to share your testimony of what God has pulled you out of, what God has pulled you through. Have a week with filled with blessings, everyone. God bless you. Be a blessing. Bye-bye.